Imagine a world where this huge shark still prowls the depths of our ocean. About 20 million years ago, the king of the sea was this big fish, Megalodon. There's plenty of scientific evidence out there that Megalodon wasn't just an apex predator, but something known as a super apex predator. It was probably the largest shark to ever exist, and potentially one of the largest fish to ever exist, sitting right at the top of the food chain at the highest trophic level ever measured for a marine predator. Which basically means it was accustomed to eating other large predators, or even predators of predators. This mega shark roamed the tropical prehistoric oceans, eating whatever it wanted, which more often than not was massive ancient whales and nothing at the time could stop it. Sadly though, all good things must come to an end and the Megalodon, after an impressive 13 million years dominating the Miocene and Pliocene oceans, finally went extinct. But what if that never happened? What if the factors that caused this shark to go extinct never materialized or perhaps the Megalodon managed to adapt and survive the Pliocene mass extinction event? What would some of those adaptations have been? What would this shark have looked like and would we as humans be able to share the ocean with this marine behemoth today? Well, come with me today as we answer all of those hypothetical questions because the Megalodon definitely is extinct, guys. Let me get that in nice and early. But what we'll try and do today is figure out what might have happened if the Meg never went extinct in the first place. Welcome back to another Shark Bites episode, everyone. Now, to learn about what Megalodon might have looked like in today's oceans, we first got to learn about what Megalodon actually looked like in the prehistoric ocean. And importantly, we need to understand what caused it to go extinct in the first place. So let's rewind back then about 20 million years to the Miocene Ocean. Megalodon had likely already been a species on planet Earth for around 3 million years by this point, which when you think about how we as Homo sapiens have only been around for about 300,000 years is pretty crazy. Anyway, over those 3 million years through the process of natural selection and evolution, Megalodon had adapted to become one of the biggest and baddest of all marine predators. Although as to exactly how big it was is still up for debate. Scientists have struggled for years to figure out precisely how big this shark was, simply down to the fact that we've never found a full fossilized specimen. Shark skeleton are made of cartilage, which notoriously doesn't fossilize unless very specific conditions are met. So because we've got no skeleton, scientists have relied on their teeth. Now, I don't have a megalodon tooth. I wish I did, but many of you might have noticed over the years while watching these videos, this little thing behind me in the Shark Bite studio. Oh, maybe you might not have. I think, I think it might have been behind my head. <laughs> anyway, this right here is a megalodon tooth made of chocolate. Look, it's the best I could do, guys. Just, just bear with me. So these teeth make up almost 99% of the evidence that we have of Megalodon's existence all those millions of years ago. And if you look at them closely, they're kind of like a bigger version of another type of shark tooth. Yep, you guessed it, the white shark tooth. If we look at them side by side, they're the same shape and they've both got a serrated edge. Now, because the teeth of Megalodon looked a lot like the teeth of modern day white sharks, scientists thought that their overall body shape might have also looked similar. And so in their previous studies, they based the size estimation for Megalodon Megalodons in conjunction with white sharks, believing they reached a length of somewhere between 15 and 18 meters long, around three times longer than the biggest known white sharks. But just like the natural world, science is continuously changing, and in early 2025, some more recent research came out that blew those lengths out of the water. The newer study compared megalodon teeth and a fossilized megalodon vertebrae to 150 other shark species, extinct and living. And they found that actually, megalodons were probably a bit more similar in their body shape to lemon sharks rather than great whites. Instead of them being stocky and broad like a white shark, it's now thought the body of megalodons might have instead been sleek and slender, but also elongated as well. And this new body shape potentially pushes their size back up again to nearly 24 meters. One of the scientists in that study noted that modern day white sharks, whose bodies are thicker and stocky, generally reach maximum sizes of around six meters long. So that would suggest that if you're a marine creature with a slightly more stocky body shape, you might be constrained by how long you can get. But if you were to look at sleeker marine animals like blue whales, for example, they can reach lengths of around 30 meters, but are still able to swim efficiently through the water. This newer study then suggests that Megalodon was a long and slender shark effortlessly cruising through the oceans. Now we know that any predator that size with teeth that shape would have been feeding on big meaty meals. And for Megalodon, that was basically anything. Some evidence in the scientific literature points to it having the highest trophic level of any marine predator ever, sitting right at the top of the food chain, which is just incredible. And it ate essentially whatever it wanted, other prehistoric sharks, ancient sea turtles, dugongs, but mainly ancient whales. These whales with their thick blubber provided Megalodon with the enormous amount of calories it needed to power its body for swimming, especially considering it's thought that Megalodons were somewhat similar to modern day mackerel sharks in that they were endothermic, or at least regionally endothermic, maintaining an internal body temperature higher than that of the surrounding water. For example, like your great whites, makos, or poor beagles. So with a body the size of Megalodons, which is also continuously producing heat via endothermy, you need 
to eat a lot of high calorie food. And those big old ancient whales fit the bill. Now for the best part of the next 13 million years, Megalodon lived as pretty much the king of the ocean until disaster struck. A change in climate towards the end of the Pliocene, somewhere around 3.6 million years ago, caused catastrophic extinctions in the marine environment. Around this time, Earth entered a phase of gradual global cooling. Ice caps began forming towards the poles, which dramatically altered sea levels and ocean temperatures. Megalodons were thought to be tropical coastal species, so both adults and juveniles likely lost out on large sections of their habitat. This changing ocean altered the marine food web and die off of important species towards the bottom of that web had knock-on effects all the way up the food chain. The ancient whales that once roamed the oceans became few and far between, and Megalodon was forced to find other sources of smaller prey. And if you thought that wasn't bad enough, they were now having to compete with the ancestor of today's modern day great white shark for that very food. Those white shark ancestors were considerably smaller and more agile, able to easily catch those little ancient seals or dolphins. And importantly, they didn't have to eat as many of them as Megalodon did to sustain themselves. Over time, those selection pressures, i.e. competition for food and habitat loss, meant that Megalodon bowed out of Earth somewhere around 3.6 million years ago. And that was that. Megalodon was no more. But what if, hypothetically, we could change that? How could Megalodon have survived that mass extinction event? Because some marine species did, like the white shark ancestors. They survived. And I suppose that one of the ways that it could have survived is if the climate never started changing in the first place, because that was clearly a big factor in its extinction. The Pliocene was a significantly warmer world, somewhere around 3 degrees Celsius warmer than pre-industrial temperatures, which doesn't sound much, but that's hot. So without that global cooling like we saw during the end of that period, the Earth and the oceans might have started to get even hotter. Volcanic eruptions could have caused the temperatures to spike even more, and that would have come with its own side effects. That might have included drying up of inland seas, which releases more CO2 into the atmosphere and makes everything even hotter. The Earth has heated up on a few occasions like this before, most notably about 56 million years ago during the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum, or PETM for short. To give you a bit of a reference, during that period of time, that global heating had temperatures in the Arctic Ocean hovering at a subtropical 24 degrees Celsius. Now at those temperature levels, we'd be foolish to think that that wouldn't have also had an impact on marine species, just like the gradual cooling did. And so I'd say that it's unclear whether Megalodon would have been able to survive those temperature increases any better than the temperature decreases that it went through. So that means Megalodon probably would have had to adapt to those changes in order to survive to modern day. Now, one of the biggest contributors in the demise of Megalodon was like we mentioned earlier, its size. When you're that big, you've got to catch and eat a lot of food to be able to sustain yourself. So one of the adaptations that Megalodon might have gone through would have been a decrease in its overall size. There's lots of examples in modern day sharks where as a response to temperature shifts in the ocean, they're essentially shrinking. In one study with Port Jackson sharks, when they were exposed to warmer water and increased carbon dioxide levels in lab conditions, they grew to significantly smaller sizes. And then another longer term study in North Carolina found that over the space of 50 years, 12 commonly caught shark species in the area had decreased in their size from between 10 to 35% and that's just over 50 years. To be fair, that latter study there is probably more to do with fishing pressures than temperature, but you can see that sharks gradually over time can shrink in their size. So if we go back then, smaller megalodons would have had lower energetic demands compared to larger ones and would have needed less food to sustain themselves. Being smaller as well would have also come with more benefits as they likely would have had the increased agility that the ancestral white sharks had, allowing them to easily capture those smaller prey species. So now our slightly smaller meg likely feeds on small seals or turtles or dolphins, but maybe also small fish or even squid. Even if our meg dropped down in size, say by a half, we're still talking about a shark here that's eight to 12 meters long, but it's just small enough to not have those huge food constraints anymore. At this point though, being a little bit smaller than it was before, it's no longer as big a hitter in the ocean anymore and larger predators probably would have been a threat to Megalodon. Presuming the raptorial whales like Leviathan also managed to survive this changing climate, they would have undoubtedly preyed on our smaller Megalodon. So to combat this, our little Megalodons might have ditched the solitary life and started to swim in larger groups or shoals. There's plenty of modern shark species that hang out in larger groups and socializing brings a whole host of benefits. Some shark groups hunt together, for example, reef sharks like white tips or black tips, both of whom have been documented chasing and corralling prey in large numbers. But some shark species will also group together for protection, as in a safety in numbers kind of thing. Scalloped hammerheads have been seen during the day swimming together in groups, sometimes numbering over a thousand. Safety in numbers is a strategy used all over the animal kingdom, but especially in the ocean 
Megalodon. More eyes just means a greater awareness of any potential dangers. And so our adapted Megalodons might now swim and maybe even hunt together in these small to medium sized groups, allowing them to spot any potential predators and quickly swim away. So they're smaller and they're a little bit more social than they were before, hanging out in groups for safety. But those two things don't really solve the temperature problem. One of the biggest issues these animals faced when they went extinct was a change in ocean temperature. The gradually cooling oceans meant that the tropical Megalodons were likely restricted to only a few select places around the world. And so they lost key habitat areas for feeding and giving birth to their young. So our next adaptation could kill two birds with one stone here. What if our Megalodon had a more dynamic temperature tolerable range, or TTR for short? TTR is the spectrum of temperatures that sharks can comfortably live in for extended periods of time. For example, in white sharks, that range is somewhere between 12 and 24 degrees Celsius, give or take. Or if we looked at a more tropical species like a tiger shark, say, they like to spend the vast majority of their time in waters around 23 to 26 degrees Celsius. So if our little social megalodons had a more dynamic temperature tolerable range, as in the range was greater, they might have been able to survive in some of the areas of the Pliocene Ocean that had cooled considerably. We could even go one step further here and lean on the Greenland shark for a bit of adaptation inspiration. Greenland shark blood contains high concentrations of urea and the organic compound trimethalamine N oxide. Both of these compounds combine together to form a natural antifreeze agent in their blood, preventing them from freezing in the waters where they live. So if we wanted to really give our megalodons a fighting chance of survival, they could adapt to have a little bit of this antifreeze agent in their blood. And this might allow them to move to ocean areas like the poles or maybe even the deep ocean. Oh God, I have literally just inadvertently backed up the plot of the Meg movie, haven't I? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Anyway, with it being able to survive in those cooler temperatures, we now have an animal that can utilize a whole new section of the water column for extended periods of time. It's also a new habitat for it to give birth to its young, who can also survive down there in relative safety from midwater or coastal predators. And then if they're grouping together with their safety and number strategy, it gives them a potential edge over those deep water predators as well. So our adaptive megalodons managed to survive the Pliocene mass extinction event and all the various subsequent ice ages until modern day. But how would it fare in today's 21st century ocean. Well, considering it's likely now spending a decent amount of its time in the deep ocean, it's probably largely unaffected by humans. Perhaps the odd few could venture towards the surface where they might get caught in fishing nets, but the majority of their time is spent in the deep. They've got an abundance of food in those deep sea squids which they hunt together, their offspring can survive down there as well. Life would perhaps be pretty cushy for them. That is until we get to modern day climate change where basically every ocean basin from shallow to deep is warming up. And at the rate that it's changing, I'm I'm not sure that our small deep sea squid eating social anti-freeze blood megalodons are going to be able to adapt quickly enough this time, but what do I know? Speaking of deep sea megalodons though and how I basically somehow just backed up the entire plot of the first two Meg movies, I think we've got to take a step back and debunk that. And I do a shed load of debunking in this video right here. In it, you'll be able to watch me react to the Meg 2, which is about as ridiculous as you might expect. Yep, even more ridiculous than our adapted megalodons from today's video. So make sure you give it a click here.